Welcome to Fairy Tale Access, where the head fairy's quest is to prove that fairy tales do exist in actual time rather than once upon a time. Together, we will unravel the heroes, young and old, who turn dreams into reality. These are the people who still believe in happily ever after. The discoveries will bend even our most cynical non-believers into believing in fairy tales. Hi, welcome to Fairy Tale Access. Today, I am really excited to introduce you to former FBI agent and amazing storyteller, Dana Ridenow, who has finished the third of the Lexi Montgomery series. Oh, Beyond the Cabin, Under the Radar. Dana, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, Denise. It's so great to be back and to see you again. Oh, my pleasure. I am so excited. I'm a little depressed because you haven't had a fourth one come out, but I'll forgive you. <laughs> well, I'm working on a fourth book, but it's not a Lexi book, but I'll come back to Lexi. Are you going to go back to Lexi at some point? I think I will. I like Lexi. She's a friend to me right now, so um, I can't. I can't just abandon her. I have to go back at some point. All right. Well, I have to tell you, we absolutely love Lexi. It's an amazing oh. adventure. And between me and several other readers, we all imagine that, you know, we could possibly be Lexi. We <laughs> love the adventure. We love the trouble she gets into, like behind the mask. It's not always our enemies who betray us. Mm -hmm. You know that? motto of the undercover agent you make friends to betray them that's I mean, true but if you look at everyday life i think we'd love to be that person at some point when we see something go wrong <laughs> it's like yes you bring out the adventure in us so oh, well, thank you what what about lexi is most like you because we all imagine she is you. And then we just, we devour these books with, you know, that sense of trying to get you to know you better. Well, Lexi and I are a lot alike. She's kind of my counter personality, I guess, uh, especially when I was younger, because I did tend to get in trouble a little bit more. And I'd ask for forgiveness versus permission a lot like Lexi did. So that part of Lexi is very close to my personality. And just a lot of her sayings and mannerisms, I think anybody that would know me would know that that's, uh, that comes right from me. So, uh, yes, Lexi and I, I like to think of her as uh, my younger self when I first started with the job, when I was young and ex into the excitement and every day was a new adventure. So um, I, I kind of, when I joined the Bureau, I was like that. Every day was just a new adventure. It was so exciting. I couldn't believe they were paying me money to do this job. <laughs> so I like to bring that part of my personality then into the character of Lexi Montgomery because she's young and she's pretty much just starting on the job. And um, you have that get up and go and that ex sense of excitement when you're young. And and I, I have to say, I probably carried that through most of my career. <laughs> so <laughs> it was always fun. I enjoyed it. So what do you have to go through to share these stories with us? Because in our first interview about the first book, you told us that it was based on your adventures, that your mom had to keep a diary because you're often mm -hmm. separated from your family. So what's the process? Does it have to go through the FBI to be checked over first? It does. Yeah. It does. It has to go through. It has to go through pre-publishing review with the FBI. So there's a unit up at headquarters, and that's what they do is they review anything that authors are writing. If you've been an employee of the FBI at any point in time in your life and you write about the FBI, then it has to go through pre-publishing review. And they're looking for you to make sure you're not giving away any trade secrets or, or anything like that more than anything. And I did fictionalize the books. So uh, not to give, not to use anybody's real name and things like that, but they are based on cases that I worked and a lot of the adventures that I had. Well, that's good to know. 
And then behind the mask, you became really good friends with a girl named Savannah. Are you yes. still friends with her today? <laughs> the character of Savannah was kind of loosely based on a person that I became friends with, except for she was not naive. She was kind of uh, a ringleader, so to speak. But we did become very close and we spent a lot of time together. However, I have to say when the case ended and she found out who I was, uh, it, di it didn't end well. No, we do not have the friendship. I would have liked to have had the friendship that Savannah and Lexi ended up in the end, but uh, that did not happen. Most of the time it doesn't happen either. People are angry because you've betrayed them. You've built that relationship and built that friendship up uh, for the only sole reason of betraying them in the end. So betrayal is a hard thing to get over. All right. So there's one part where you're rescuing some little dogs. Did that really mm -hmm. happen? The dog did not, the, the actual scene didn't happen, but there was situations like that where I did see that the, the animals were better off with the activist. I mean, they were coming from labs uh, where they were being um, basically stolen from and liberated from the labs where they were mistreated, uh, the abuse, the filth. And so they were better off with the, the activists. You knew that the activists were going to find them nice homes and take care of them and love them. So there were, there were plenty of those situations where uh, I wanted the animals to remain liberated and not go back to the laboratories. But the scene that I wrote with her being out there with the beagles, that was actually just uh, a fictional scene. Okay. Well, because there's been several young people that I checked with that have read it, and mm -hmm. that it just gives them a really good idea of what it's like to be undercover in the FBI, that it's really a bit more lonely than it sounds like all the action and mystery sounds intriguing, and it's something we all want, you know, especially when we're entering our 20s and 30s, just want mm -hmm. that sense of adventure, but I think the stories are so enjoyable to follow because there's things that Lexi does and you're like, no, <laughs> <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> hey, but, and you're like, you know, you're just waiting to see what goes on next. And you actually, it just makes it impossible to put these down, especially in behind the cabin. Mm -hmm. You know, she took a risk. And did you have any risks like that in your career where, <laughs> You got shot or? Well, I didn't get shot, but I did take a lot of risk in the career. Uh, when, I, when I wasn't working undercover, I was working on a drug squad. So I was working narcotic investigations. And drug investigations just are, are inherently dangerous. You're doing search warrants and, and busting through the doors at 5 and 6 o'clock in the morning. And there's a greater chance of firefights breaking out and getting shot. Uh, in those situations than even when I was working in the undercover realm. So I did come across a lot of dangerous situations in the 20 plus years that I was an agent, but luckily I was never shot. Um, or the scene in the cabin that took place where she was attacked and, and um, the attempted rape and things like that, none of that happened. That was all from my imagination. But um, a lot of the emotions that she was feeling uh, the, uh, just uh, from from the act of violence and from dealing with that kind of person, the the Otis's of the world, those were real emotions that I poured into the character of Lexi. Okay. Did you ever have anybody that you got close to that actually died in the line of doing an undercover operation? Not that died in that. I, I've lost police officer friends in the line of duty, but not uh, in the undercover world. No, but it's it's a difficult thing to lose uh, any law enforcement officer. But uh, luckily, I, I never lost anybody in the undercover world. And beyond the cabin, it really came out well how you could have somebody close to you like that and the way mm -hmm. that you wrote it. It just really drew us into the story. It was heartbreaking. And well, thank you're just so exceptional about writing. And then 
Below the Radar. Oh, yes. The last one. That that was a fun book to write because it was based on a case that I worked with my partner, who turns out to be my husband now, but we were dating back then. So that was the first time that I'd worked an undercover long-term case with a male partner. And uh, it, it added, I think, a di whole different uh, layer of Lexi's personality to have to deal with a male agent. <laughs> It was so well done. Do you find um, that your fans, now that you covered it and they know that it's loosely based on your career, although we tend to think it's more really based on your <laughs> career, but do are they more intrusive or do you find it intrusive, the questions people ask you, like how you met your husband and is it as true as below the radar? I do get a lot of those questions. And when I was first writing Below the Radar, I was a little apprehensive of writing. And my husband, Bill, kept asking me, well, what's stopping you? What's the matter? And he goes, well, he finally, he says, I think I know what the problem is. You're writing this male character and you know everybody's going to think it's me because it was based on him. And you're worried. You don't want to write the real stuff. You need, and he says, you need to forget that it's me and just write it, write it warts and all just write it how you want to write it write the character the good the bad and the ugly and he said and when it's all done I'll tell everybody all the good parts of the Blake character is, is him and all of the uh, bad stuff was just fiction <laughs> so that was his way of dealing with it <laughs> but that book is probably a little more what factual based than the other two, as far as it was a real case, we actually did travel over to the Netherlands together. And I will tell you, anything in the book that happened that was funny really did happen. And all the funny parts, that came just right from all the stupid stuff that we did while we were over there. Um, so you know, it was fictionalized, but a, a lot of the fun, silly stuff that happened along the way in the food and the descriptions and the description of the camps, all of that was um, true to life. Yeah, it made me want to go to the Netherlands, too. <laughs> me, too. I'd love to go well, back. Well, just to try all the food. You're so good about talking about food. Like, Lexi <laughs> loves food. And yes, everything she does. sounds so good. <laughs> and the other great part is that not only do your fans love you and you know it, but, I mean, you've won at least three pages of awards. <laughs> yeah. so were you surprised by all the awards and honors that you've won I mean there's the Southeastern Writers Association the Royal Dragonfly mm -hmm. Curtis Florida Writers Digest the Benjamin Franklin Award I mean I can't name them all but the Royal Palm I, literally you know I was yeah I was I was blown away and shocked at the honors that the books have received. Um, I was really pleased because all three books won best novel for Southeastern writers each year that they came out. So that was quite an honor to kind of win. Uh, I consider that the trifecta since I've got top honors with each book, but to win the Royal Palm, that was something that meant a lot to me too, because there's just so many um, books entered. I just felt just really honored to win those awards, but all of them, everything, everything it just meant so much to me because people were reading the book and the, you know, it's one thing for a judge to like it, but it's another thing for, you know, people to come up and see you at a restaurant and say, Oh my gosh, I just finished your last book. And I loved it. That means so much to me. That means even more than winning an award is when somebody says, Hey, I loved your books or it meant so much to me or love the character or even when they get mad at me, I've had several of them get mad at me because of the Logan character in the second book. And then Finn in the third book, I've had, you know, little old ladies point their fingers at me and get really mad at me. But to me, that's, that's great. That means that I did something, you know, I inspired them. I ha they loved that character so much that when that character no longer existed, they were angry at me. <laughs> I know, but it was, I just imagine from the first time we interviewed you when you originally wrote the book for your mom and the way that it's just taken off as a series, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy, but it's so special. I don't know. I think it's because you're approachable, you know, you seem like 
you'd be someone easy to talk to, much like Lexi, the way she's able to get along with so many different people. <laughs> and I think people wish they could be, you know, more like that in everyday life, you know, or the well, just the determination. Well, that's quite a compliment because I um, that is one of the things that's very important about working undercover is you have to have the personality to get along with people from all walks of life. You don't know what kind of case you're going to be working. You'll go from a drug case to animal liberation front, earth liberation front. And you have to meld your personality to those kind of people. You know, uh, if you're doing a drug case, you need to be a little hardened, a little more hardcore, but yet you need to have the compassion and the empathy when you're doing something like what I was doing for so long with the animal liberation front. So, so do FBI agents have to talk with psychologists a lot? Is that part of the job? It, it is when you're like undercover. You. Yes, when you're in, when you enter the undercover program, it is. Every six months, in fact, you're pulled out of undercover work, whatever you're doing. You have to talk to a counselor and you talk to actually two counselors. One is a, a psychologist and one is uh, an kind of an, an agent who's been in the field, been working a lot of undercover cases, that sort of thing. So you, you sit down and you talk to the counselor first, and then you talk to your second uh, counselor and you go through a process. And then you also take all the testing, the MMPI and all the personality uh, assessments, because they want to make sure you're not going off the rails or you're not getting so deep into this character that you no longer know reality and so there has to be some type of tether to reality. And that's part of it is every six months you have to go for this screening. And when you first join the program, it's kind of a pain, you know, you're like, oh, I don't want to take the time to do this. It's only a day, but you still used to have to fly to Virginia for it, things like that. But I, I got to the point where I kind of enjoyed it because I was seeing kind of the same counselors every time. And, you know, they were kind of checking up on you. And to me, it kind of felt good to know that there was, there was a security blanket in, in place. There is something that if things started happening with my personality, it should stop it. <laughs> and when you say you're a retired FBI agent, is that like a lot like, you know, once a Marine, always a Marine? <laughs> like, is well, it not really so. retirement? <laughs> <laughs> it, it is retirement as far as once you walk out the door, uh, the FBI is pretty much done with you. You don't get called back to our cases or to consult or anything like that, unless you were to apply for a consulting job. Um, but once you're out the door, you're out the door, you lose your security clearance, everything. You're just uh, walking around as a normal person after that. Now you can still carry your gun and things like that. Uh, you have to qualify once a year with it, but you, you do have the ability to carry a gun and carry across state lines and things like that. But I think, your mentality is you always still think like an FBI agent. You know, I can't go down into a dark alley without checking the corners and looking to see who's what. I can drive down the street. I can pretty much tell you who's holding drugs and who's not. And, uh, and you know, that's just something that's never going to go away. That's just from 20 years of experience. That just happens. But I have learned that to trust people now and that, my friends and my family and the people around me, um, they're not out to get me. <laughs> they, they are uh, friendlies and I can trust them and open up to them. So it's, it's been interesting because when you've worked undercover for as long as I did, you couldn't get close to people. You couldn't tell them who you really were and you didn't have those close relationships. So when I retired, that was the hardest thing is to, is to open up to people and let them see who I really am because I was so used to having that wall built around me for so many years, but it crumbled, but it crumbled slowly. <laughs> All right. So now that Lexi's on a little vacation, what are you uh -huh. working on? I'm working on a novel I've always wanted to write. It's a lot of fun. It's, I guess technically it would be in the genre of women's fiction, but I describe it as the big chill meets wild. It's basically about a group of uh, friends that went to high school together, but all went separate ways. Now they're in their early 50s and they're brought back together because of a tragedy. So they go on a uh, one of them wants to hike the Appalachian Trail by herself, but the others don't want her to hike by herself. So they all come along for this journey. And it's kind of a mix of comedy, but a little bit of uh a little bit of literary fiction because you're coming to terms with aging and emptiness and, 
and loss, love, infidelity, all the stuff that we we kind of face later in life a lot of times. And um, that's just kind of it. And, and getting reacquaint, reacquainted with these these people that used to be so close to you when you were young, but there's been such a years of separation. But uh, you can you can get that back. And I think that's what they're finding on the trail along the way. Oh, I can't wait to see it. When is it coming out? I don't know. I'm still I'm still working on it. I'm about 50, uh, 50, 60 percent done with the first draft. So I had a little bit of trouble, to be honest with you, during the whole coronavirus thing when it first started. I would have thought it would have been my best writing time. But I think just because the state our country was in and and seeing so much stuff on the news and not having any kind of schedule whatsoever, my brain was going in every different direction. I, I just couldn't couldn't write. I was I spent about two months where I just shut down and all I did was fish for the most part. But suddenly, I guess I'm getting a little bit more structure into my life and starting to plan a few things and get things on the calendar. And the creative juices have come back. And so I've been writing the last couple of weeks. But it, it was a weird experience to, to go that long without writing. I got rather cranky. <laughs> the writing helps me stay, like, uh, sane. <laughs> now, with this book, it's not based on an FBI type story. So would it still have to go through the FBI because you worked with them before? No, it doesn't because I was careful not to put an FBI agent in it. Had I put an FBI character in there, then it would have, but it doesn't have any FBI characters. And I did that on purpose. I do have like one police officer, but she has no dealings with the FBI. So, um, so it does not have to go through pre-publishing review. But anything I write in the future that has an FBI character in it will. So does it feel like you can never escape them? <laughs> <laughs> in some ways it does, because anytime the FBI is in the news, of course, everybody, that's all they want to talk about. And a lot of times it's stuff that's not so flattering. And, you know, you're doing a book club and they, you know, you'll get drawn away from it because of what's in the news. So, yeah, at some point, sometimes it does feel like I can't escape the bureau. <laughs> But then again, in other ways, I don't want to because it was such a big part of my life. And I still have so many close friends that are still in the Bureau um, that I love dearly. And, you know, I hope they remain safe until they're able to retire like I did. They're exceptional. I can't wait for the next book and the next Lexi book, Crossing Our Face. Well, I've got another Lexi book in mind, and I also have an idea for another FBI series that's not Lexi, but it's another FBI female character that I would like to write. And I'd like to eventually down the road have uh, those two cross paths too. So I think it would be a lot of fun to have two different series and, and at one point combine them. I think it'd be fun. I think it'd be fun for readers because I enjoy that when I'm reading an author and suddenly a character will pop up from another series that I've read. I was like, I recognize that person. So I just think it'd be kind of fun for the readers. So when people see your Facebook profile and they see you fishing, do they ask you more questions about what happened in Beyond the Cabin? Is that where you learn to get this affinity for fishing? Well, and it, it kind of did happen that way because before I joined the FBI, I was working on a tour boat and the character Captain Mead that's in uh, Beyond the Cabin is based on Captain Sandy Vermont. And that was the tour boat captain that I worked for. And he was the reason that I fell in love with the low country of South Carolina. He taught me to fish. He was, I mean, the whole history, mystery, romance of the South because he did all the tours. And I just developed such a love for this area because of him. So in a way, that character was part of the reason that I do enjoy the outdoors and enjoy fishing. Unfortunately, he died of cancer a couple of years ago, and I would do anything if he was still alive because Lord knows I need help fishing. <laughs> I need all the advice I can get. <laughs> well, definitely. But what was the least favorite part of the career you left, you retired from? The least favorite was probably just the bureaucracy of it all. You know, every large organization, you have bureaucracy. And dealing with 
uh, management. And, you know, when you read behind the mask, it, it does seem like that I have, uh, yeah, not, not a hatred, but a dislike, I guess, a strong dislike for management. That was all true. My editor actually toned it down because it was a lot worse in the first couple of drafts. And the editor was like, no, 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 no. You, you come across very anti-management. We need to tone it down. So that was probably the real, the thing that I hated the most about the FBI was dealing with the bureaucracy, dealing with management, having to go through all the channels, trying to get money for something that you needed. And um, you'd see somebody else buying a helicopter, but I couldn't get money to do a thousand dollar drug buy, you know, just silly stuff like that. But yeah. Last, oh, last question. So with all those years of working with these animal right activists, did you stay mm -hmm. a vegan? I was a vegan for about seven years. I'm no longer a vegan um, because I love seafood too much. <laughs> And uh, especially living down here with the shrimp and the fish and, uh, you know, and the blue crabs, you know, I can't give up any of that. So I'm not vegan anymore, but I was vegan for about seven years, but I do love animals and I respect the animal, uh, the animal rights groups. Everybody thinks that I'm anti animal rights, but actually I'm the opposite because of all the years of working with them. I developed a real respect for them. And there's very few of the activists that step over that line and warrant the attention of the FBI. For the most part, most of the activists are law-abiding people, doing the right things, just trying to make the world a little bit better place for animals. And I have a lot of respect for them. I really do. They don't me, so, but, I, but I respect them. <laughs> Well, thanks for sharing so much about yourself and where your series has gone and where you're going with the next book. Because we really enjoy reading everything you write. And honestly, I think we've learned a lot from Lexi. You know, we've learned about exercise, eating better. We look at you as the author now and we're like, okay, if we do that, it's going to be okay. Getting <laughs> older won't be bad. There you go. There you go. You know, in the outdoors and just, you know, reading people. So uh -huh. I appreciate everything that your series has done and the exciting places you're going with it. Well, thank you. And I really appreciate you talking to me and taking the time to um, get the word out about the books because it's very helpful. Got to have readers. <laughs> Definitely. Until next time, keep asking questions. And if you want a great series to read, this is it. Lexi Montgomery, FBI agent, undercover. It's exciting. We'll see you soon.